Old world Florida. Old world Florida. Old world Florida. Dude, I'm telling you, dude. Dr. Narco Longo came on and dropped the hammer of the guy. America's mother, daughter of Atlantis. God sent the weatherman. The devil sent the Spanish. Florida is Eden, the phantom of Newton. Carly is deception. So Florida is the truth. Welcome to Florida, baby. Floridians, Americans, Atlanteans of all national national identity. <laughs> What's up, guys? How we're doing? Uh, I just had an interesting encounter right before we went live here. Jimmy doesn't even know, but I just spent the last I'm reacting live. Just spent the last couple hours. I should you not debating Native American origins human origins, morality, things like abortion, you know, all the kind of hot topics of the day with a, um, you know, a rabbi, an actual rabbi oh, wow. who spoke Hebrew. And I was making some, making some, uh, what's the, what do the people say? Not progress. I was making some, some headway with, you know, getting him thinking about, especially the Native American stuff. We went through the name of Miami having a Hebrew meaning and I showed him some stuff and he's like, hey, that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it went deeper and deeper down some rabbit holes. I got to let my girlfriend in. It was overall pretty good. Luckily, he was a, veg he was a vegetarian rabbi. So that's like, you know, uh, lightens, will lighten anyone up. Let me go let my girlfriend in the front door. It's locked real quick. Jimmy, fill the noise. Good fill evening. The, fill Good the, fill evening, the air. everybody. There's a lot to cover this evening. There's been a lot going on, and we were not here last week, so apologize for that. So we've got double the news stories here. Um, and, yeah, it's really hard to know where to begin, but that's uh, just a typical thing that might happen, that conversation in Lake Worth, Florida. It's um, it's where I'm at at the moment as well, just nearby, and uh, beautiful beaches, very interesting city with a lot of kooky characters like this rabbi here, and they all want to have a conversation. Just where, how did you meet him? Just on the street? He came in. He was a friend, friend came of the in. store. Okay, yeah, friend, right. friend of friend of my parents actually. My mom is dead, dead, but yeah, the dancing elephant is a meeting place of the minds. Of the most interesting characters in uh well in the area but uh that's why i was late um a little bit he was in here you know at nine we were talking that's what this space is for we talk and debate and it was healthy respectful argument but it was interesting to get some insider hebrew perspectives not only linguistically mm -hmm. but politically but uh we're, there'll be a whole nother store you know or there'll be a whole nother show for that in store with more of the red heifer stuff coming up we talked about that a little bit too the red heifer event 
Um, yeah, just like in the Jekyll video, the uh, the story about the rabbi with the, the coin of with Baal, the face of Baal on the shekel. Just like that, that conversation that Ooh. Timothy Benz was able to have with a, a man in Israel, nice. a rabbi, and that was fascinating. Hearing that inside, you know, that inside knowledge. Dude, yeah. Yeah, uh, do you want to? You think it'd be good to sum up the Jekyll Island video a little bit? Yeah. Or should we do some stories first? Oh, I mean, uh, yeah, whichever. There's a lot to cover in the stories, but the the interview that is in the, the, the Jekyll Island video. I mean, just yeah, just so people know who you're referring to. Yeah, let me just pull it up here. I did Stephen Hawkins was a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> He's a vegetarian. Whatever came through the tube, right? <laughs> yeah. Probably mostly, you know, fucking beep from dudes. <laughs> but uh just yeah red red wine so no it's a very interesting video just start sharing it well yeah we're, we're talking all over the place basically i posted a video about jekyll island like two days ago or so go check it out if you haven't big uh production we went over there ourselves and you know interviewed some workers and stuff like that but uh it's a pretty good one, and it's very, let's say, uh, revealing. And there's some angles. This is an older story, you know, the Jekyll Island, a creature of Jekyll Island, Federal Reserve. And then on top of that, you've got the Native American history with the potential sacrifices going on there. But basically, you know, here's Jimmy's. Thank you. Um, go check it out. Jekyll Island. There's some incredible stuff in there. Connections mm -hmm. between the Native Americans, Canaanites from the Old Testament. And like I said, this story's been told by some others, some other people before me. You know, I can't help that. But uh, I hope we brought a Floridian local perspective, right? Um, you know, some insights that are local might bring to the table that some people who did videos about it might not. And then on top of that, we went there, interviewed people who worked there, and then put to the test a lot of the theories that were claims that were made in Tim Benz's interview that really blew the lid off Jekyll Island around 2008. Then Robert Sepper reposted this video or you know converted the radio interview into a youtube video which you know i did too except he trimmed out all the mentions of jesus christ most of the mentions i should say i think i think there were some in there but he removed entire portions of the video where bence credited jesus you know described how he was being led by a greater force a higher calling to remove the evil from the island you know, I, I liked Robert Sepper videos growing up, but it doesn't look good. It comes across very anti-Christian. He wasn't upfront about it. He didn't say, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, very he, sneaky. Yeah, because it was surgical. It wasn't just he took yeah. off the front, front end or the back end. It was all the parts in between taken out that mm. he referenced Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And the story you mentioned with Tim Benz also says, well, he was he had just come back from a trip to, mm. I think, Israel. And he was in Jerusalem talking to rabbis who had basically firsthand evidence, you know, hand tangible evidence of Canaanite uh, sacrifice, money changing, uh, idolistic, you know, refacing the money to have bow on it mm. and that whole portion was taken out and i can't see why like that is juicy material like that it is was fascinating people love to see it and uh i thought it was super interesting it, it just deepened the connection between the native american potentially having middle eastern you know cultural practices and mm. you know we talk about that all the time on this channel but 
that's the whole thing. You know, we put out most of the interview. So I think there's two parts to that interview that they put it out on the original people who made it, Rob Skiba and yeah. Tim Bentz, maybe, but whichever portion we put in, it's the whole thing. So once it starts, there's no skips. There's nothing taken out. So it might not be the entire interview, but from when it starts to when it ends, mm. it's unedited. And you can prove that because it's very easy to find on YouTube. The Timothy mm -hmm. Bentz, Skiba, what is it, Rob Skiba interview about Canaanite altars. It comes up. There's actually several accounts that are that are um, showing that video. So you can prove it for yourself. It's um, it's amazing. Yeah. And then some of the two of the people who did videos about it had AI in their thumbnails. Mm -hmm. Of course. Like, come on, that's just not a good look. That's just silly. I look down on that. To be honest, it's like that's demonic in investing the truth realm, inviting AI demons into the thumbnails. Number one, it's mm -hmm. deceiving people. It's a thing that never happened or if there's not an authentic illustration of it, you had to make one, mm -hmm. had to make a fake one. You know, I don't ever use AI pictures ever. It, I, there's an uncanny valley to it. It's, yeah. it's, all, it's uncomfortable when it's when it's almost real it's almost a photograph but it's slightly off yeah so go check out the jekyll island video it's long but it's the whole truth as much as we can fit in to a video and yeah or go there yourselves it was awesome jekyll island very cool i believe tim bence when he says that he blessed the land and you know removed as much of that dark energy as he could have um you know he walked with jesus when he went into that place and he you know in his own way flipped the tables on the money changers and exposed what didn't get talked about in the whole jekyll island stuff everyone knows they did jekyll island you know the federal reserve everyone knows that the financial but this was showing the deep, dark, insidious, you know, spiritual element behind it. Why did they choose that place? Why that? Why the homeland of that tribe in particular? Why didn't they go to Palm Beach or Key West? And they might not have been developed then, but Key West was developed. You needed a boat to get there, but you needed a boat to get there when they went there too. So they could have gone to any secluded island to do their business. They went to Jekyll Island for a reason. I think there is an occult spiritual you know negative spiritual reason that they did that and most people have but we went there we went to the museum we confronted them you know hey what's up with the sacrifice what's up with the giant beds you know and that's that the was... <laughs> that's the essence of the video that reaction was incredible that the uh staff member the the the, the only one there that had a degree in this field and and they brought them to speak to you and yeah they the alarm bells just rang for them and they just jumped on it before you could even basically finish your question they were oh no it's not true no no, no it's fake no there was a lot of hoaxes uh and this is all part of ai it's like you, you know you, you read a story and then you realize oh it's a satire or it's a fake story or you see an image and then you find out it's ai it's they're blurring the lines between what is real and oh, yeah. what is not and you know that can only be done for uh, sneaky benevolent you know reasons um so yeah it's very it's very interesting but uh Patrick says, did anything bad negative happen to you after visiting Bach Tower? No, it was great. No, I, you know, I'm sorry if anything happened, but I, that place is awesome. I, you know, be careful associating that with that place because you can go back there and have a great time. That being said, spiritually. I didn't feel anything. Yeah, yeah and spiritually charged places, maybe, you know have more hauntings things like that maybe it can swing both directions there's a charge there that's super strong but i think it's mostly good i love the music there the gardens the this is the gardens the bells mm. the you know the birds exotic you know scenery if you're not it's, happy and 
we're not happy there, you know, where are you going to be happy? Right? Exactly. It's like paradise. You know, you yeah. can, yeah, you can practically, yeah, you feel like you're in another world there. It's very magical. And the constant ringing of the bells, all different sizes. It was it's like stepping into a different world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bark Tower was great. We haven't, have we done one of these since Bark Tower? Yeah, actually, maybe not. I thought it was maybe just one. No, I don't yeah. think we have actually. Maybe not, but we did uh, whatever. Here, we're going to try and bring my friend Alex on, guys, because we've got an exciting announcement. Okay. Big news. Big news. <laughs> Big news. It's going to be huge. Right. Here, give me one second here. Got to send a link. Going to bring Alex in to have a chat. All sorts of new updates and developments going on in the channel, in the world, in the state. So much to discuss. Things are moving very quickly. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, we're going to be diving into some Florida news today. But we've got an exciting announcement about how you can give me some money for pretty much. Pretty, pretty much. Uh, just kidding, but we've got our first official sponsor for the channel, I'm proud to say. So this is big launch we've got here, a product that I can actually shamelessly stand up here and pitch to people. Okay. Dr. Longo wouldn't sell you something he didn't like if it you know, included having a gun to my head. No way. I've been pitched such garbage. I've been pitched, you know, even from when I didn't have that many subs, people wanted to, you know, promote their product or something. Mm. Hot, hot sauces, notebooks, like astrological, you know, other people wanting to do readings and other people offering all types of services just to, for a shout out here and there. I've been offered a lot of stuff, a lot of, you know, hot sauce, especially that one almost, almost went the full, the full, the full distance. But <laughs> this is actually cool and something that I've taken a shit ton of and I recommend everyone could take vegan, meat eater, whatever. But we got my buddy Alex on and you guys can, you know, We'll hash it out. You guys can see what we're talking about. Yo, Yo. Alex, the Moringa man. What's up? Hey, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here and uh, I'm happy to, uh, you know, just be a part of this whole journey, man. It's been awesome watching your channel grow and flourish and just connecting with you again <clears throat> yesterday at the Dunedin Causeway and before that at Craig Park. We're in the full moon, so yeah. Indeed, I got it too. And guess what, man? I couldn't be the moringa man without a moringa tree. Mm. <laughs> nice, perfect. Exactly. So we can see what it's all about, guys. This isn't any uh, Vietnamese child servant, child slave, <laughs> uh, factory plant nonsense. This is moringa. I'll let Alex tell you guys, you know, more about it, but it's just a leaf. It's literally, you couldn't even really call it a supplement because it's just a food. You know, it's it's a whole food. Exactly. Uh, grounded up into powder. Just the leaf ground up into a powder. Right, Alex? Correct, yeah. And it's actually technically vegan because the capsules are not made mm -hmm. from uh, gelatin, which a lot of capsules are actually made from the cassava plant or tapioca. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a, uh, it comes from a partner of mine in South India, and we've been partners um, since 2017, because in 2016, I had a mission to just source a bunch of different moringa and not just the leaf powder, but also seeds. And I collected a bunch of different seeds from all the main uh, regions where it's commercially uh, cultivated. But anyways, um, I do believe the source I have is... Um, uh, permaculture inspired 
which is something that aligns with my values, um, permaculture, and be beyond organic. And what's important is I do supply uh, this moringa to health food stores. And so they, some of these um, clients of mine require USDA organic, you know, that certification and everything. But I do believe for those of us who, you know, know what permaculture is, permaculture is kind of like the next level beyond just USDA organic. And so, uh, you know, I don't want to ramble, but I first learned about moringa back in 2011. Um, I know we've had, you've had Spencer on the channel before, and he's been rocking the green dreams. So um, back in 2011, I actually, um, you know, connected with Pete Canaris, and before Green Dreams even turned into something, uh, Pete had a uh, landscaping company called Clean Cut. <laughs> so back in the day, uh, I actually helped him with that. And what's funny is um, <clears throat> the the botanical manager at Bach Tower is a friend of mine named Taylor, and um, Taylor actually worked for Green Dreams as well. Um, without you know going on and on, Taylor was instrumental with one of the first permaculture food forests that was part of a uh, university. It was at Florida Gulf Coast University in Fort Myers. And so uh, that's where Pete and I went and got our uh, permaculture design certification back in February, 2012. But anyways, so, you know, Pete was like selling the moringa tree and, you know, educating people about it. And it's just really blown my mind. And um, I'm super passionate about it. I mean, now there's, you know, some products like CMOS. Some people have heard about that and before that spirulina. But, you know, to be frank, when you actually do a side-by-side -side comparison, moringa is not only more nutrient dense, it's actually more cost effective as well. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm happy to say that for every person who purchases um, the moringa cap, uh, $10 will go towards uh, uh, Dr. Longo in Old World Florida. All you have to do is use the, the promo code Old World Florida when you're purchasing these capsules. <clears throat> Shelly, yeah. I'm in. This is his website right here. That's my cell phone number right there on the top. <laughs> Damn. The Moringaman.com. Easy. Simple, easy to find. Make sure you use Old World Florida when you're checking out. And yep. They got capsules. Yep, you'll get 10% off your um, purchase, and uh, there's free shipping. And uh, like I said, $10 uh, will go directly towards uh, Old World Florida. That's awesome. Nice. I've been really keen to check this, this herb out, this plant out, because – I keep hearing health uh, benefits and it just seems to be sort of a widespread across the board of, of different nutritional benefits to this, to this, uh, it's like superfood, right? So like, a, a yeah. Main, yeah, what sort of, what sort of things does it help with? Well, for one, it's a complete plant protein. So it contains oh, a spectrum of amino acids. Uh, but all in all, there's 92 nutrients. So there's something called the entourage effect, which has kind of become popular in uh, cannabis dispensaries. You know, they mm -hmm. talk about the entourage effect, but the entourage effect is, in simple terms, you know, nutrients in combination are more effective than any. So, for oh, example, really? yeah, there's like seven times the vitamin C. Uh, in a serving of moringa compared to a serving of oranges, you know. Oh, hang on. oh no, 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 hang on, hang on. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, 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 no. If we're squaring up on oranges, oranges versus, I'll, I'm not... off, I'll drop you off this call right now, bro. I didn't know. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, no, but I'm just saying that's just a little taste because, like, what I'm don't trying ever, to say, is for, you know, for like those that, of us, bro. yeah, I mean, we we understand. The best way to get vitamin C is that liquid gold, you know, that freshly squeezed orange I'm only juice. teasing it. It's the yummiest. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, you know, for a lot of people, they take like uh, vitamin C supplements, you know, and that's usually ascorbic mm. acid. And that's just not as bioavailable as vitamin C that's in whole foods, you know, like long ago yes. saying. The, the moringa leaf is just pure leaf, you know, it's uh, you get all that fiber. So it's not like with juice where you normally remove the fiber when you take juice. Uh, of course. And, 
but anyway, so the, I mean, I don't want to like, you know, ramble. It's so easy to look into kind of some of these stats about, um, you know, comparing the nutrients in Moringa to, to other, you know, foods we're familiar with, like how kind of, uh, you know, there's more protein in Moringa leaf powder than in yogurt. And really it's mm. the vitamins. Long story short, it's 92 nutrients and there's tons of um, antioxidants. There's like over 40 unique antioxidants in the Moringa. So what I'm trying to say is that when our body is absorbing all these different nutrients, there's a synergistic effect. So like if someone's just taking a vitamin C capsule, they're just taking vitamin C, you know, and there's no yeah. other nutrients that kind of complement that. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I could go on and on and, you know, the plant's amazing. It's like drought tolerant, you know, mm. so they grow some, you know, uh, native in India and Africa, but it's spread all throughout our planet in um, subtropical and tropical regions. And it's known, you know, and obviously, um, you know, doc Dr. Longo, you're the expert in linguistics, but <clears throat> Moringa is known in like over a hundred different languages as the miracle really? tree, the oh. immortality tree the the never die tree because you know what's unique is that people are starting to grow moringa in places in our country where um you know it freezes and what's oh. interesting is the moringa won't die it will go dormant you know when it gets really cold and then as soon as it's you know starting to get oh. warm it will regenerate so that's this idea of like well if the plant you know is so resilient what happens if we incorporate that into our diet, you know, will it kind yeah. of help? And, you know, I've had to really learn how to navigate because unfortunately in our country, you know, we have the FDA and mm -hmm. uh, a pharmaceutical drug approved by the FDA can, you know, cure, treat and prevent disease. Mm -hmm. That's why when I do public speaking about Moringa, I have to always say like, you know, consult with your doctor because, you know, nowadays yeah. it's, Fortunate, a lot of people take different, you know, prescriptions instead of just having a, you know, a diet that provides actual it. medicine from the earth. Yeah, yeah. it's fascinating that's that it's that it grows all over the world as well. That's that's really cool. Yeah, nice. and I'm I'm really passionate about my my lab testing, and for people that want to, um, you know, get reports, I'm happy to share um, the the lab testing that I do. Because, for example, like if, uh, you know, sometimes people, if you buy Moringa on Amazon, you know, it could be inferior Moringa because a lot of products, let's say, that's grown in China, you know, even if they claim to be organic, usually there's contaminants in the water. And a plant like Moringa is what's called a, you know, a, 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 a dynamic mineral accumulator, and it can accumulate um, heavy metals. And so Moringa, you don't want it to have too much iron in it, you know, because over time that could accumulate in your body. So I work really hard on trying to, you know, provide, um, you know, for the marketplace, the the world's best Moringa that actually has like extremely low levels of, um, you know, primarily, um, you know, like the iron in it, like I'm saying. <clears throat> so, so, yeah, I'm happy to share some of the lab testing I've done with it. And, you know, like I'm saying, the, the trees here to it's great if you know you can grow a tree grow a tree and you know it's like it's it's great to eat the leaves raw and and fresh mm. and basically the the capsules i sell the powder is technically still considered raw because it's low temperature dried and on top of that leaves are harvest in the early morning and so the nutrients tend to be more dense than if you were to harvest like during the daytime nice. Can you yeah. throw that back up on the camera, please? So people can see what Moringa is. It's yeah. literally, it's literally just the leaf. Yeah. It's not, it's not like a chemically derived part of the leaf. It's not like a isolate. It's literally just the leaf, but yeah. grounded up into a blender. Now yeah. I haven't been taking capsules of this for years, but I've been taking Moringa powdered like this, exactly like this for years. So all this is, is capsuled Moringa and it's see, you can eat it just like that. Right. Great. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's super simple, healthy. We're going to wrap this up. You know, I don't like pitching stuff or selling, but if you want to support the channel, cause this is entirely free, I do all this stuff and put it out for free and 
I like what I do, I'd be doing that no matter how much I made. But if you want to push it farther forward than it's going, this is a way that you can do that. It's an excuse, you know, to support me, even if you don't like Moringa, but it's good for everyone. I promise I would try it. You know, I wouldn't pitch it if it's not something I've taken a shit ton of. So it's really good for you. You know, people swear by it. It saves starving communities. Blah, blah, blah. Alex, thanks for joining, dude. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. I, I appreciate you um, supporting it. And look, if you just heard that noise, that's people making orders, right? <laughs> so, yeah. No way. <laughs> yes, sir. Right, well, let's let's get let's get that noise. I'm starting to like the sound of that, baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's cool? Somebody just, just ordered um, a tree too, a little sapling. Oh, nice. So, yeah, they, they just ordered a. Yeah. So, shout Sweet. out to. You your your loyal fans man uh, i was muted do you also sell the trees as well the saplings i do yeah i have a oh. little nerd and uh, you know i'm more about the capsules but to be honest i kind of give the trees away to, like some of my neighbors because i try oh. to i try to trade different plants right you now i'd love a tree i mean I'd, i want to buy a tree it looks like a nice is it an indoor plant you just no no it's an outdoor plant it loves full sun oh and it gets pretty big Think about it is um it's super drought tolerant and but you know i could go on and on but what's so re remarkable about the moringa tree is that its seeds contain natural flocculants uh, that that coagulate um particulates and like bacteria in the water mm. and you filter that and have safe drinking water so there's oh, like wow. a formula that if you have a liter of sewage you can literally use like two moringa seeds that are crushed and it can turn the sewage into safe drinking water. Whoa. So, yeah, there's actual places in, in Africa where they use this. You know, over here in America, you know, we use our our, our chemicals, you know, yeah. we don't use sophisticated to use something that, you know, the creator created for us, you know. But um yeah. but yeah, Rock yes. This is thing. well, you know, Alex, before we let you go, just can you touch on why this is called nicknamed the tree of life by some people? Well, yeah. So like what I was saying, because of all the nutrients, you know, that it really provides, you know, that sustenance and um, can really just help promote, you know, vitality. And like I was saying, you know, the tree, what's unique about it is it contains, um, there's something called zetin, which is a growth hormone responsible for vegetative growth. And the moringa tree is known to have the highest concentration of zetin. So it just grows really quickly. So like you can just cut the tree like flush with the ground. And within a week, it will just just sprout, you know, tons of new growth, you know. So it's kind of just an incredible tree. So that's what it means, like the, the never die tree. Like it's how it's, it's very tough to kill. And what's cool is that technically there's a whole, uh, you know, in botany, there's like what's called invasive plants. And moringa will not be invasive to a native habitat. Mm. You know, let's say there's like oh, some weird, you know, an area. It's like, yeah, you know, well, if you study the geometry of the moringa seed pod and then the seeds. It's the combination of a tetrahedron and a sphere. It's like a, you know, it's mm. like a and a sphere. The way the seeds are shaped, and then it matures. It just kind of opens and like the seeds have little wings. So like they'll just kind of disperse, you know, but what's nice is that, especially when I lived in Hawaii, you have to study like invasive plants because you don't want invasive plants compromising your different ecosystems. So, um, you know, it's nice to know that it's such a, you know, prolific tree, but it, it won't um, interfere with like a native um, habitat, which is great. Really some other plants that kind of start out competing, you know, and they just dominate and they take light and water and, you know, nutrients from the native plants. Yeah, there's one in almost, you know, in some neighborhoods in Florida, there's a moringa tree in every yard. Like some streets here in Lake Worth, there's a moringa tree in every, every house has one in their front yard. So nice. How did you first hear about moringa? You just saw it? Um, I had a, um ex-girlfriend who was super moringa maker you know she'd make 
mason jars this big of marine gun nice i had a bunch of it super good loved mixing it into my water that was my primary my preferred me method of ingestion you know because mm -hmm. because not everyone gets vegan capsules veggie capsules those are kind of sometimes can be hard to come by so i didn't have them in capsules back then that would have been nice but i would mix it into my water which you could still do with these capsules if you wanted just mm -hmm. pop them open you know one one per glass of water would probably be pretty good but i love it in my water i would drink that a ton and it always made me feel really really good awesome That's about as you know as as good as it can get because you know i don't really didn't really have any health issues to begin with but it only makes me feel better so that's awesome. Did you use a sweetener or you would just? No, just a little bit in my water. Awesome. Maybe a, a little lemon. Yeah. A spritz yeah, of I, lemon and some I, worked, I was telling you yesterday briefly this vegan chef who became one of my first um, customers when I actually just had moringa powder that came from a tree that I grew from seed. And then it was like three years old. And the first time I um, pruned the tree, I had all these leaves, but anyways, the, the vegan chef kind of determined if you mix a little ginger, lemon, and honey, that was kind of what he would do as like a shot. And that's kind of how Moringa Man started. But then I started having um, some local health food stores interested. So I was like, okay, the only way I can sell to them is they need um, USDA certified organic. So that's when I realized I had to go on a mission to, uh, you know, find that. Yeah. You hear that noise? That's another order coming through. <laughs> <laughs> Flying off the shelves. Two sales in, yo. If you like Old World Florida, go buy some Moringa. Okay. Go buy yeah. some Moringa. So join the Patreon. You know you know how little, guys, just so I can pat myself on the shoulder here. I think I put out the most quality content on YouTube by far in ratio to how little I beg for money. That's a title I think I hold on YouTube. The best content for the least money. Begging. You know, I think most of you guys don't even know I have a Patreon because I can't even bring myself to ask people to join. It's just icky. But I'm okay with you guys ordering some Moringa and I'm okay with pumping that. And let's send that bitch to the moon, okay? Let's get us let's get us rolling in some dough here okay dr longo needs to get a a, a place to live to live <laughs> a so, castle uh, we're we're doing castle. Pizza, right <laughs> working on yeah and yeah. it just seems right. like now is the time to really take control of health and nutrition and get good systems down stuff that's dry that can last a while and keep you stocked up it's a great time for it well, see, that's a whole other thing. It's not like I promote it that way, but it's good to have in case of an emergency because yeah, I, I, yeah. I um, for the health food stores, they buy a five kg bag from me, which is like oh. 11 pounds. So yep. I do sell that on my website as well. And then also oh. one kg um, in the bulk powder. Because like I was telling you long ago, I sell that's made in the FDA registered facility. It's a 400 milligram capsule in the tapioca capsules but then i have my oh, own cool. maker and i'll make for my own so if people wanted to they could order like a one kilogram and um then just make their you know own capsules you just have to buy a capsule maker and then you know yeah. buy the or can you have it with water yeah yeah i mean what yeah, i would do new samples um i'm actually like somewhat of a, a beekeeper i did most of that in hawaii but i would just use some a little bit of honey and then like oh uh, yeah Dr. Longo was saying, just throw that in the water and i made like a type of green tea and that's kind of the samples you know like Beautiful. I'd, give I'd be at like a farmer's market promoting it yeah nice. but that, nice. i appreciate the opportunity to um you know share some of the knowledge about uh the, the moringa olifera tree or the miracle tree yeah and let's like let's yeah. Let's wrap this up before the moringa becomes boringa. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, just kidding. But. I was waiting for you to say like, well, what about the Moors? The Moors, they knew about the moringa tree. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh, they be eating, uh -huh. <laughs> They be scarfing that. 
that moringa then. But anyway, some more of that ranga. Yep. Shout out to your um, followers, man. There's been uh, at least a few orders come through, so we're you know definitely um, we're adding to the the fundraiser here. So. Shell yeah, y'all. Yes, sir. Support the yeah. channel. Push push us farther forward. Let me go to more places. Okay. You know, I'm going anyway. Nothing can stop me, but, <laughs> you know, I can do a lot with a little. How about that, too? So if you donate, here's another title I'll claim. If you donate to a YouTuber, I promise I'll do more with that buck than anyone on YouTube. You can take that to the bank. More output, more, uh, you know, engagement, going live, letting people call in. We're going to be doing that soon, too. We've been just, just been having so much news too on Thursdays. We're deciding we're probably gonna have to do separate days for call-ins. Maybe Wednesday mm. call-in, Thursday news, or vice versa. But you can plan on Sunday so much services content. too. Church, Church yep. of Atlantis every Sunday. We're gonna try unless I'm traveling. If I'm if there's a whole week where you don't see me, I'm in a van. I'm I'm in Jekyll Island. I'm in you know, Naples. I'm in Key West. Expeditions. Like, the the expeditions must down. occur. You were a little yeah. shy longer. You said St. Pete in like a couple of yeah. months. You're doing right? Yes. Meetup. Oh, yeah. Upcoming meetup. We can announce that a little bit too. Uh, Jacksonville, guys. Downtown Jacksonville is going to be the meetup for 24th, is it? April 24th? Yep. That's right. Is the upcoming full moon. Jacksonville. Shell, yeah. All and right, after, Alex. After that, downtown St. Pete, right? Yeah, the next the next month was... after that will be St. Pete. Awesome. Well, thanks for bringing me on. And of course, I'm going to, you know, continue to tune in for some uh, current events in Florida, right? <laughs> Thank you. Even behind the lines. But That's um, right, but yeah. Alex. Yep. Nice connecting with you, Jimmy. Thanks for your questions. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very more... excited about Moringa. <clears throat> Have a good night. Thanks, Alex. Peace. All right. Peace. Moringa, Moringa man out. Um, guys, go buy that stuff. Don't make, don't make, don't make me push it. Don't make me, you know, beg. Just go buy it. Support. Just some. to see how many purchases have already been made. Uh, the old world Florida audience knows health. They know uh, the tree of life when they see it, and they snap it up. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. Shall so yeah. much news is just pouring in. News on top of news. It's I got yeah, I've got a lot, a lot coming in to cover. Yep. Okay. Boom. Let's hit it. Florida news. Well, dun, 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 dun. I I was gonna carry on with talking about DeSantis, all of DeSantis' holy wars that he's got, and I want to get into that. But what what has just come in? Something we were talking about earlier. Uh, there was a there was a cruise ship uh, father-son dispute that was drunken and apparently it led with a 20-year-old guy at the sun jumping overboard and apparently he's alive he has alive. Uh, he has survived yeah this no is way. just dropped no <laughs> way. they found him he he jumped off like and fell i got to see the distance but it was it's like a 100 feet cruise. yeah it was a massive cruise ship had a drunken fight with his dad, and then just jumped off. Uh, somehow he, Le'Veon Le Parker, 20 years old, he jumped from the Caribbean's Liberty of the Seas ship on April 4th. And, uh, you know, it was it was very tragic. It was just so uh, hectic, so sudden. Just a, a fight leads to uh, jumping off a cruise ship and dying. So it was all very sad, and it seems like he's he's pulling through now. So uh, I have. So we're clear to make jokes about this. Yeah. <laughs> now that's, that he survived, that's really had, what I was we had, hoping. We had a couple in the chamber that we were just waiting for the all clear <laughs> to let rip on this guy. Uh, basically, you know, what, you know, what's the story? He jumped off a cruise ship. He got in an argument with his dad. Jumped yeah. off a cruise ship. This happened off Florida, off Florida waters. Uh yes, I believe so. Wow. Let me see. So he, argument with the these happen to be teenage gentlemen. Yes, the the dad, the father's a teenager, 
and uh, <laughs> the mother is, I don't think, a teenager. Um, but the son is half teenager, basically. <laughs> and he's a survivor. He's a battler. He's a strong, strong little guy there. So good on him for pulling yeah. through. Could be the waters of Florida that are rejuvenating, healing back to life to bring back the dead. Who knows? Maybe he made a no. bargain with Poseidon. No, is there a video of this, or is it just the dad's word we're going off of? Oh, granted, he's go. been rescued now, so he might have another side to the story. Yes, man, he, this he pushed me off, man. But uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, who jumps off a cruise ship because they're having well, a row? Oh, well, you know, I'm trying to Jimmy, read where it was, Bahamas. We were to we were talking about this. Is there anything we can look at with this? Maybe to bring up. Yeah, I've, I've got it. I've got a nice visual of him here with a huge fish. That's I'm sharing it. it right now. You just have to. It's a story. Uh, this is Parker, the guy who jumped. With... <laughs> yes, he's Dude, a good he's not fisherman. A teenager. Well, uh, his let's see, let's see, I and mean, he probably needed to look closer into this. Or maybe there's been so much news, news on top of news. So is that, that's is, that is that the same story or is that just like a He's second 20 story? 20 years old. Yeah, it could be. Um, I'm going to have to do further digging. Jesus. We don't drink. I'd like to know how my son was served so much alcohol. Oh, they don't drink. Uh, he's claiming that the, the cruise ship got the sun drunk on purpose. Um, yeah, we'll look more into that. Oh, he's, uh, he's a hunting boy. He lives for it. We'll have to check his chart. Yeah. Very so good. Okay. Good so he's part, teen he's part, he's off the coast he's, of the Bahamas. He's part teenager. Yeah. I'm trying to find a family photo. Can, confirmed you know he's he's of the uh of the more golden ilk you know he's got some lighter features but jimmy and i were talking man this guy really conquered the some more stereotypes. Ilk. yeah we were we were, we were talking this guy really conquered some stereotypes you know the, this guy is brave he's courageous you can hear me right jimmy yeah yeah, yeah. can you hear him yeah you can hear me okay he so the, he must this guy I can hear you fine yeah he's got to be brave an and courageous and basically we were talking he really conquered some stereotypes you know, two two and one he conquered <laughs> he not only proved that black men have loving fathers but also that they can swim <laughs> yep and they can <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Two birds, one stone. He He's conquered. A civil rights, um, I'm hero. behind it. I support it. I think what he did was remarkable. There's a and, there's um, a family photo on. Yeah, he's. People need you know not fight to the point where it leads to their son jumping off a cruise ship, uh, you know. And now he's saying, "Look, yeah, we were fighting. Yeah, my son jumped." But um, it was the, the uh, cruise ship, the Royal Caribbean, that got him wasted. Um, so, I mean, I, isn't that just what happens on cruise ships? Isn't that what you know when you sign up for it? <laughs> That's the whole point of all the bars on the cruise ships. Um, so, you know, let's hope that dad and, and son now, after this has happened, he scared everyone. Obviously, everyone thought he was dead. Uh, I would have thought he would have been swept up into the propellers of it. I mean, it's just such a such a shocking, ghastly uh, potential could have happened here. I don't know how he survived, but he's a he's a yeah. real tough nut. He's a battler. Yeah, and he pushed on. Yeah, and it's I it got to be the waters of the Gulf. This happened off the coast of the Bahamas. Uh, it could have been a, a mineral spring directly underneath that he was able to breathe in, drink in. Uh, could have given him radium powers could have given a lot of minerals that could have powered him forward to survive the uh the terrible affair here so 
we'll see what what his story is i guess when he gets back and uh, gets rehabilitated so that he can speak on it but look jumping back over to desantis uh it's he's he's you know making a lot of moves i guess do they have the same election time as the presidential election is he trying to get stuff done in the lead up to uh the election you know to hmm. keep the votes coming in do you think i thought I'll it was a different honest. time of year because he's very active right now he's always been good but he's he's not sleeping at the moment because he's trying to get so much push through uh, and he's trying to really like answer the calls of floridians that are concerned about things that are happening in other states they're not wanting it to come here to florida and so they're you know making their voices heard and he's coming in he's doing his best to uh to actually put it in more than pretty much every other level of change the protections he's putting into law and uh how quickly he's doing it one after the other so obviously disney's on the uh thumbnail there he's just won a massive legal war with disney where they existed they had their own government i believe i didn't know about this it's a corporation that was able to what form their own sovereign country like yeah, when they were when or... they when they originally got that land, it was like so big that they made a deal to like self-govern it and wow make make like community decisions, you know, by themselves. Because they have that suburbs made, in it, right? Well, it kind of made sense at the time, but it doesn't make sense now. And the way yeah. that they were wielding that power was totally mm -hmm. political totally yeah. anti-child anti-sensibility and who knows so there is yeah, a misconception a with, there is a misconception with this though here are some people tipped and i want to maybe bring up if you could bring up some visuals as i run through these uh oh yeah for sure tips please thank you john sup five bucks long ago why did pones de leon believe he found the fountain of youth we're going to do a video on this soon i've covered it a little bit you know number one florida is the fountain of youth when Ponce de leon was told bimini the fountain of youth bimini our mainstream historians mistake that for the modern day small island of bimini bimini actually around 1510 was the name for all of the florida mainland Bimini, Bimini, Bimini. Wow. And when they said the Fountain of Youth was in Bimini, they were spot on. And he went right to where they told him. There was no mistake. Now, he went to Southwest United, so, sorry, Southwest Florida. Southwest Florida. Originally, I think he landed Northeast Florida. Um, you know, Melbourne, New Smyrna, different places claim it. They don't know, you know, 100%, but New Smyrna areas, you know, usually considered the, the first bet, northeast somewhere, but, or maybe a little south, you know, it's, they don't know exactly sure. They say he didn't have his measurements 100%. There is a, a guy, um, an author, that we're trying to have that we're trying to have on who's one of his books is about the actual route that Ponce de Leon took but regardless wherever he landed the first time that wasn't fountain of youth related according to the story so east coast of florida he landed and it wasn't fountain of youth related but then he went back i think 15 21 1513 was his first voyage. 1521, I think he went back to the southwest coast of Florida, landed in the domain of the Calusa. The Calusa were big, muscular. You know, they were probably very tall too, but they were more known for their robustness. They were more known for being yoked. They were jacked. And they were ferocious, callous, they were callous, very callous people, Calusa. Kalos means fierce in their language. Um, it has a similar meaning in Greek, like it means like good or like 
military. Um, it's a little bit of a stretch with the Greek, but it's also a Greek word. But Kalos is what they called this, this territory. There's the Kalusa, and the Kalusa demanded tribute from other tribes around South Florida. So they were very influential and dominant. And Ponce de Leon landed in Southwest Florida near Warm Mineral Springs. And Warm Mineral Springs is the spring that people think is the number one spring that people genuinely believe this is the one. And like I said earlier, Florida as a whole is the fountain of youth. The water, highest concentration of freshwater springs in the world. Uh, you know, highest magnitude freshwater spring in the world. The largest and deepest freshwater spring in the world. Florida. So flow, it's the flow, you know, it's Florida, very aquatic, ruled by Poseidon, ruled by Pisces, astrologically, March 3rd. But blah, 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 1521, Ponce de Leon landed in Florida. He went to the Fountain of Youth, and when, if you stumbled on the Play Springs, what is this? Oh, that's Bimini. If you stumbled on a place like Warm Mineral Springs, it's warm. So it's warm outside, and then the water is like 85 degrees around there. It's pretty dang warm. It's like a warm hot tub. Feels like a hot tub some days. But it's warm. It's very sulfury, so it smells. You know, it's got that healing sulfur water smell that I love personally. And if you stumbled onto that and there was no fish, not really any alligators, and everything that falls in there preserves 100%. There's bones and skulls that have felt fallen in there, skulls that have brains from 10,000 years ago because it's that preservative. So if it preserves the dead, it may have a preserving effect on the living, all the, com all the minerals in there, one of the highest mineral content of any spring in the world. Minerals, Warm Mineral Springs, Florida. And that's the name of one spring. It's a generic name, but Warm Mineral Springs. Um, that is my guess for a number one true fountain of youth. If it has to be exclusive, if it can only be one, it would be this one. Florida has all the water that you can drink. That's amazing for you. But the fountain of youth... It's hard to say, you know, fountain implies drinking, like a drinking fountain. But in terms of just sheer therapeutic healing, reversing bad things that you already have wrong with you, warm mineral springs, Florida, people swear by. People go there with MS and all these awful conditions and some say cure themselves. Cancer, some people claim they've been cured, you know, all these different things. So Warm Mineral Springs has the most claim to fame for actual healing power, especially ones that you can go to today. You can still go to Warm Mineral Springs today and have an awesome time. It's cheap, spend the whole day. Only Eastern European people go there though. If you go there, you'll be the only English speaker. When we go there, we're pretty much the only English speakers there. And we're usually the youngest people there too, because it's all retired Eastern Europeans who are convinced 1 million percent that it's the actual fountain of youth. Mm -hmm. This they, they have springs in Russia. They came here for a reason. And, wow. Yep. Warm mineral springs, Florida. So why did he believe, why did he believe he found it? Well, they stumbled on that probably. And the Calusa, repelled them very quickly after they landed so or maybe they started they might have started building a settlement i'll have to look at that story but basically on the way out they were getting chased out and ponce de leon was fatally wounded some say with a poisoned atlatl some say it was a 
arrow. Um, but it was a projectile wound to the thigh, some people say. But yeah. He yeah, succumbs. poisoned with this the sap of where is it? It was just there. A sap of a tree. Um a manchineal, manchineal tree. Poisoned with the sap of the manchineal tree struck his thigh in a wounded in a skirmish. Yep. So he died on the way out when they were, you know, they got chased out of southwest Florida by the Calusa. Juan Ponce de Leon was wounded, so we don't we can't really tell if he you know received any benefits because he died very quickly. But um yeah. That's why he, you know, I don't know if he he never overtly wrote I found the fountain of youth, you know. You really have to read it, read in between the lines a little bit. But he reported, you know, they reported being told of healing waters in Bimini and you know great wonders in Bimini. So they head to headed to Florida. That's why they went over there. They stumbled onto the Fountain of Youth too in southwest Florida, uh, near Warm Mineral Springs. We know he landed there nearby for his second landing. So that's probably where. Thanks, John Sup. White Devil from the Illuminati, 999. That's his username, not me. Calling anyone that. How well do moringas grow in Arizona? Ooh, we should have posed that to Alex. But uh, I don't know. Look it up. I don't know. Sorry. Alex may know if he's in here, he'll type it. Brandon Brent, thanks for the 199. Appreciate it, dude. Christian Madrid, 10 bucks. Doc would like for you to do my birth chart and all of the same reading you did with Juan on Juan. Love your content, man. Take care. One love and peace. Okay. We'll have to do a night where we do a lot of readings at once. I think mm -hmm. it's to make it worth, worth the while. We'll, we'll try and line yep. that up. We'll try and that Try and line that up, but if you remember when I did Juan, it was live. And you know, if I can make a video out of it, we'll do it. So we'll make a live stream out of it and we'll line up a couple or a bunch of birth chart readings and we'll do quick birth chart readings. Not skip anything, but you know, quick. Okay. Thanks, Christian. Appreciate it. Rob, 10 bucks. <laughs> Long go. Let's go Mormon, brah. Oh, yeah. I get this. I mean, with it, such beautiful cathedrals and temples. And I mean, yep. what a fascinating uh, history. Knowledge of potential American history. I'm very curious with them. Is yep. this guy a Mormon? Do you know him? I don't know. Rob uh, T. Robert. Are you a Mormon, Rob T? Let's uh, go Mormon. He's Mormon curious. Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, get, they got something right, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know how to tame the, the wild. They know how to tame the uh, tame the less reasonable sex, if you know what I mean. Keep order. Keep it <laughs> nice and peaceful. They know how to keep the peace. Yeah. And make beautiful white marble structures. Uh, I, just I just don't know the white babies. Uh, yeah, that too. I don't know what the what the gateway into Mormonism is though. How do you just, you know, how do how do you just jump into that? It seems like it's something that you'd have to work into. But it's a it's a fascinating world, and uh, Rob T should comment in with some more details potentially. Like uh, how how can how can somebody just jump in there? It's not like it's a church, uh, like normal, you know, generic churches you can just rock up to. Or maybe you can't. Can you just go to the Mormon temple, anyone? Um, and where is the Mormon temple? Many questions. 
But it, it looks nice, and I respect that. They have these uh, baptize, baptizing pools with golden bulls underneath. You know, what did they know about the Canaanites? That would be, be some interesting uh, Mormon wizards that I'm sure would have some interesting stories. Speaking of wizards, what's uh, what's next? We went through all the uh, oh shit, someone tipped. Yeah, there's another one. Patrick, there. Patrick Vog Vogler, Vogler, five bucks. Mongo, have you ever talked about Cyrus T and Estera close to War Mineral Springs? Shell, yeah, man. I can tell you, and a day one, homie, because we 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 talk about that. Uh, up a lot. Only teasing, but I did a video on it. Uh, it's called uh, something like Ho Florida's Hollow Earth Cult, you know? But uh, that's about the, what are they called? The Korashan Unity, the Korashans, mm -hmm. Korashan. And they're pretty trippy. You know, they, that Cyrus T directly inspired who went by the name Koresh. He claimed to be like a, almost like a, I don't know about messianic, but like a prophet, you know, leader of this cult. You know, I hate when people use that, that term loosely, it's but a community, community, they were like holistically wanted to minded, astrologically interested people. They were into very into celibacy too, you know, mm. so they died out pretty quick. But um, yep, not good on the longevity there. But they they revered this uh, leader, this health um, nutrition expert and leader spiritually so much so that they thought he would rise again after his death. Is that correct, Cyrus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They believed Cyrus Teed would actually uh, return, you know, come back to life, much like Christ. Um, and unfortunately, he didn't. But they they left him out just in case he would, uh, for quite a while, right? Yeah. They didn't yeah, bury he didn't, him. He didn't come back from the dead. Yeah. And they all, Obama. a lot of them lost faith then and, like, moved away. But a lot of them stayed in. It's a big claim to make, you know. I mean, you, you don't make that claim. If he did make the claim, or do they just sort of come to it themselves, or...? I don't know. You know, it was a long time ago I made the video. But yes, I have done a video on it. I have talked about it. Thank you for the five bucks, Patrick. Patrick's my middle name, by the way. I'll give strong I'll give Irish you, name. Give you guys that uh, little little uh, bonus Easter egg right there. Middle name is Patrick. And yep. Proud name. Awesome name, strong, very Jupiterian, very Jupiterian. It's the father, the patron, the patron, padre. Okay. Oh yeah. To be, what's the word? Um, patrician, wealthy of the upper classes. You know. Um, yeah, patriarchy too. Patriarchy. It's the father. Jupiter is the father. He's the, you know, it's the fire, air, and ether. Father. Jupiter rules fat. That's why the word fat is in father. And typically when people, when men have children, they start getting fatter. Father becomes fatter. So that's why fat is in father. That's why Japheth, Japheth is another way of saying Jupiter. But, uh, yeah, Patrick, good name, strong name, St. Patrick. Man, he kicked out them black people from Ireland, bruh. Man, he, man, why he kicked out them serpents, bruh? Why he tripping, man? Man, there was, there was, there was three feet tall pygmy, pygmy, uh, there was four feet tall melanated aboriginals who ruled Ireland, who <laughs> ruled the, the United Kingdom. They was pig, they was pygmies. Then St. Patrick came in, man. He kicked a, kicked all them pygmies out. I don't know. 
people believe that. <laughs> did they? Believe did that. they just confuse the snakes? For... People hate St. Patrick. People get so triggered by St. Patrick. It's pathetic. The snakes. They're, they're like, they're like, oh no, no, I've got all the information on this. I'm confirmed. He was either chasing out pygmies, or he was mass converting to, or he was mass converting to, uh, you know, Christianity, force converting. Yeah. It's like blah, blah blah blah. Who cares? They're Christian to this day. He won. Anyway, I mean, you know. He's a winner. In That's fact, Christianity, Christianity comes from Ireland. Christianity right. didn't get imported to Ireland. It didn't get pushed on anyone. The true foundational roots of Christianity and Judaism, Hebrew, original Hebrew uh, religion, come from Ireland and or the Irish. So, Wow. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Good name, dude. Patrick. Now, Vogler. Yeah. I don't know about it. I don't know about Vogler, bro. Sounds bro. like a pretty sounds strong like, name, too. Sounds like Vlogger. What are you, a Vlogger? There we go. This is a German, it's a German vlogger. Vogler. Vogler. Thank Very you, Patrick. Vogler. On with the news. All right. Well, diving back in, just continuing the, the chat about DeSantis. Ron, he's out there swinging. He's throwing haymakers. He's trying to make his mark, I guess. Um, he's fighting lots of battles. The Disney thing. So he basically was able to seize. He was able to stop their little uh, trick that they were trying to pull with the land, with, with being able to basically supersede the government and the state and do what they wanted to do. And then, you know, look, if a corporation really wants to do that and they want to, they want to run everything in a Henry Ford style and it, it's just very organized in terms of uh, efficiency and obeying the law, that's that's one thing. But the amount of, of uh, creepy crimes coming out of Disney World, all of the Disney parks, um, and even a, you know a connection with Epstein, uh, Epstein's Island, and you know different things that happened in the eighties. There's a there's a lot of uh, kooky stuff happening down there at Disney and. Just the uh, the rate. Here we go. Yeah, the uh, the rate at which uh, child sex offenders are constantly being arrested. Um, it's very it's very concerning, and so they need to be able to be transparent. They need to be very uh, you know compliant with the state law. And if they start to go, oh, actually, no, what goes on between these closed doors is is you know we're going to run things and. It, it just starts to get a bit shady. So I don't know the, all of the details of this case, but it seems like he's just asserted the authority of the state. Oh, no, I hope that doesn't trigger people about authority. But, you know, he's just keeping keeping crimes from being, uh, you know, committed. And these people, unfortunately, down there, they get up to, uh, you know, shady, shady stuff. So he's doing that. Um and yeah, then, there's you know, there's one little myth that we gotta dispel while we're on this topic, if you don't mind. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. No, go for it. This is something that's getting passed around. Um, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, the king, King Charles actually owns, or the king and queen of England actually own Disney." That's not true. Oh. Walt Disney used a legal clause that was named after King Charles III. Not, you know, said that they were owned by King Charles. So this was getting passed around wow. TikTok. People were saying, yeah, you see that the England actually owns Dis Disneyland. It's actually like royal, you know, territory. That's not true. People just saw <laughs> saw King Charles. King it Charles doesn't even went, make sense. Durr. But yeah, that's a low IQ uh, take. But you know, people so much. You know, we were talking about this before. Uh, so many things are flying around now, and the the news and the truth and the verifiable facts are so ridiculous. You know, if you were to tell someone from the past the kind of news stories that we are getting used to seeing on a daily basis, and the kind of actual 
things that are going on around the world. You know, it's just it's goofy these days. There's been a the loss of of civility or control of you know it's it's pretty wild sometimes. And so it's uh, yeah, it's it's good to point out when things are not true. Like the uh, the thing where people thought um, Disney was buying F. Siemens Island, right? That was right. a that was part of an entire false news website about Disney that exists somehow. So it's hard to tell the difference. Um, Rob T, oh, another ten bucks. Appreciate it. The importance placed on accurate history, correct translations. Yes, there was a lot happening in ancient America. Join a group who seeks to carry forward accurate history, family, peace, love, righteousness. Amen, man. It's Sounds hard. Great. It's hard to think of those those concepts flourishing anywhere else than Florida. You've got the climate for it, socioeconomic environment for it. Yeah. Thanks, Rob T. Oh, he's got more money. Look at look at this big spend. Wow. Thanks Those for another Mormons ten bucks. Are doing well. Going to LS LDS, going to Latter Day Saints Church this Sunday. I'll let you know. I'll still need to. I still need to call you about some info. I need clarification on from one of your shows. Ooh. Okay. Cool. There's a LDS uh, podcast, isn't there? Because there was someone that we want to get on the show was uh, just did a big interview with them talking Wayne about May. Wayne May, right? Yeah, the uh, I guess it's a YouTube channel, LDS something. It's the two Church. brothers. Two brothers, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're good. Interesting. We could they're have really a have a friendly debate or discussion night, perhaps between you and them, just uh, talking about what what all this is. What's the Maybe. deal? with this maybe um, yeah it's an interesting uh prospect i mean rob seems very um evangelistic he wants to share the good news mm -hmm. so it's thanks rob rob t robert robert the hobbit robert. it's robert it might be robert i like robert it's like a uh okay so back on to mr DeSantis. he's you know he's out there Stuff with the schools, with the pronouns, seeing the stories like this where there's a big um, Supreme Court. Like, it kind of gets ridiculous. You're seeing these stories with the uh, Supreme Court rulings on whether teachers can say their pronouns or if they can't. And DeSantis is in there just sort of trying to keep things, you know, keep the parents that are calling out crazy stuff that they're noticing in the curriculums and the, the teachers and stuff just trying to keep that managed um and so that's that's in the news but also he's uh, changed the guidelines on uh, wine bottle sizes did you see that changed what on <laughs> yeah. wine bottle this is i guess he just threw it in as a fun one or to uh to help some some sort of local business out but yeah he made it so that you can buy larger size bottles of wine in, in Florida, that was like a that was a, a bill that was pushed forward or something like that. So, mm. uh, you know, he's doing all sorts of stuff. It's uh, the same. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. There's ten ten bills that have just been signed into law. Like he's he's going through doing all sorts of stuff. He's uh, but he's he's winning. He's winning against Disney, um, and then the abortion stuff. He's he's trying to sort of appease his base with that kind of stuff keep some keep some uh common sense into the into the scene with all of that stuff and looking into the, the canaanite history the new video um there's there's a lot of interesting tie-ins there so that's good of course oj died um very uh very suddenly i guess um just just passed away recently um he recently lived in florida i think he got away from all of the all the stuff that went down with the case can you bring um, up some that we can look at for yeah for war? sure he was in a bar in Kissimmee apparently once just hanging out but he lived in a place called kendall yep that's like south Miami. where is that kendall's just south of miami okay yeah 
It's like a suburb. So Miami. this, right? Okay. So yeah, he was escaping LA and all the lights and attention. I guess. Uh, uh so like, Jimmy, that's orange juice. Yeah, I know. I just type in OJ Florida, and of course, tricky yeah. names. Yeah. But he 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 escaped down here to get away from there. You don't even know his name, do you? <laughs> OJ who? Um, Isn't that Orenthal? Isn't that his name? Orenthal Simpson yeah, Jr.? Orenthal Simpson name. Jr., I think. So it's in Miami, okay. Orenthal, it's, it's tricky to say. It's weird. Um, so, yeah, not a huge connection, but I guess when you need to get on the other side of the country, uh, it's a good place to go. He was very proud of um, making a medical decision earlier. Uh, a year or two ago, he was very happy about it, very wanting to promote it for everyone to do, and unfortunately, didn't go really? too well for him. Yeah. So he oh. was pro V. Oh, yeah. He was super he was, pro V. He was all about it. Yeah. He was very, wow. you know, like many celebrities were, they wanted to show that they were doing it too. Um, wow. So, yeah. But um, yeah, he was here for a bit. I mean, who wouldn't want to come visit? He's up there at a bar doing karaoke. He had nice. some fun here. And, uh, yeah, a case that divided the nation. Very historic history with that. Um, jumping uh, topic, and we're actually kind of on the same topic. Another mystery, okay, has just been solved. Another murder mystery. Uh -huh. This one is all the way back to 1968. This has been a cold case. The oldest cold case in, well, definitely Florida. Uh, oh, it's taken me over to Facebook now. The Milkman Homicide. What? I don't know if anyone's, uh, Indian River County Sheriff. Have you ever heard of this? No. Wow. It's, I hadn't either. 1968. Milkman. 68. Um, yeah, it's, this is hot news just arrived. Uh, deputies identify the killer in 1968 Florida milk and homicide. Okay, so what? here is a Haram uh, Ross Graham. Interesting name. Uh, the Milkman homicide was the, co the oldest cold case in the history of the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. Okay, <laughs> just in the history of that county, I guess. Nice. I thought it was all of Florida. So it was a decorated veteran, Purple Heart recipient who relocated to Vero Beach, which is really a lovely place. So it was a great decision for him to do that. I uh, recently visited Vero Beach and it's very nice. And this is in, this, in the late 60s on, on this date, on yesterday's date, April 11. He was missing. He never came home. And uh, I guess they've finally figured it out who did it. Now, is that the gentleman on the right there? <laughs> yep, this is the mugshot. Uh, he's, he's keeping his face alive. <laughs> he's, keeping his, um, he's keeping himself alive with technology. What's up, Ben Ben? Uh, Good to see you. No, I think he's Archivist like a in the house. Hella good vibes tonight. Oh, oh you're, in the right, you're in the right place, Brandon. Can he come on? Can he come say hi? Here we go. Oh, I don't know. He's chilling. <laughs> that Look at face that. is so distracting. Look at that. That's a, what a trio right there. <laughs> yeah. Three Stooges, right? This is, this is what, what like bands look like now. This is what, you know, the, the entertainment yep. industries. Uh, That's young, <laughs> young yeah. dream. Young Drizzy flex flex drip six nine on the right there. That's a uh, little Beelzebub on the left there, and that's uh, that's young. <laughs> that's a uh, Miss Young Mister America, Young Captain. That's Young Captain Navy. NASA. That's the yeah. uh, Navy Walrus in the middle there, in the <laughs> center. Yep. It's no. young, young teen on the that's, left. Young, the yep, teenager. that's the teenage. The teenage killer. It's all these, I mean, I'm trying to find his name. Uh, 
because it's important, I guess, after so many years. But uh, it's probably in the article somewhere. You can look this up. Yeah, that's. What are the details on this? This is interesting. Why is he called the milkman homicide? Oh, okay. Hang on. So the guy in the middle is the milkman, and he's in his milkman uniform. Sorry, I didn't put. I didn't put those. Together. Right. It looks like Navy. He's. Is there so he, the milkman, got killed by some guy. Yes. He he Let's... disappeared. Here we go. See, if there's not even a Wikipedia for this. It's a little known thing. Damn, um, dude. Uh, that a World War II vet turned milkman. So, you know, he came back. Oh. He'd probably seen a lot. And he was uh, taken from, after surviving all the horrors of the war, he was actually taken by this gentleman on the left that we saw earlier delivering milk in 68, Indian River County, Florida. He became Damn. a beloved milkman, only to be shot dead while on his delivery in 1968. Wow. Wow. And it, it That's turns not like out. That's like your average this, movie about the civil rights. <laughs> it's not your average this, civil rights. This movie. just, the one this just in done. breaking news the killer was actually OJ Simpson's father himself. <laughs> it's been a long line of family. Breaking news, I'm just getting in. Yeah. He sowed his wild oats. Um, so he was laying with his n next to the milk truck, killed execution nice. style. So oh, what what was the motive? Uh, were milkmen paid? No, they just dropped off the milk, right? Back in the day, they would just whistle down, whistle while they worked and drop off people's milk. They were, he wasn't like carrying cash. So, you know, the mystery only deepens. We'll have to do a deep I, dive into this. I think I think he was tapping. I think the milkman was tapping Miss Teenager. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, right. Oh. Tapping. Okay. Oh, well, I shouldn't there say It was that, romance. But I think the milkman <laughs> was tapping uh, Miss. Interesting. Miss, Miss Criminal, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, he'd had a little bit too much white milk. That's, and he was that's the. the chocolate. Yeah, that's the milkman legend. There is that he goes door to door, tapping your wife. Chop right, yeah. <laughs> While you're that's not it. home. That's the rumor about milkmen. You know, back in the day, yeah. there'd be uh, there was no TikTok. You know, wives were yeah. all at home, just just <laughs> drinking tea and cleaning, and then you see just dashing. <laughs> CJ, yeah. CJ, you're you're a dog, man. CJ, I'll give you credit on this one, but you got to let me set it up. So let's what, just go back to the headline. Point? Can we just, no, just go up to the headline. Don't worry, Jimmy. Just go back up to the headline, please. We could. So, so the if, case if, is I'm re if I'm reading this right, they found out it was a chocolate milk. <laughs> 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 it, was a, it was a chocolate milk uh, situation. <laughs> It was. Uh, say, the milkman the didn't have any milk chocolate. Man. It was chocolate <laughs> milkman murder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's how it could be described because it's uh, tragic and involves different kinds of milk. And uh, we're going to look further <laughs> into it. But yeah, the, it was it before chocolate milk. I think it was. He yeah, didn't have any chocolate funny. milk. It made him angry. But it may have been before chocolate milk was actually a thing. Yeah, this is so it's 60 cacao. years. This is some cacao milk, yo. <laughs> uh, I mean, a... I want to know the whole story. I want a full feature length film about this, how they found him after so long. Chocolate yeah, milk man. don't expire, yo. <laughs> <laughs> you can chocolate leave it milk out. don't expire, yo. <laughs> yeah. that's a, man, that's a it's cold ass sugar. case right there, honky. <laughs> man. Man, it's I was good. Even alive in 1968. Well, <laughs> yeah, he survived all this time, uh, it, living dude, with the guilt. Be, it would be hilarious if if he's not even close to being old enough to have committed those crimes, <laughs> and they're just like, "Oh, we're for sure." <laughs> he can't talk. We got him. Found him. Yeah, we got yeah. him. CJ said, "You got to be quick." With a Q Q I Q U I K, like Nesquik. 
Uh, <laughs> you got me. Quick. They should have. They should have solved this a little bit more quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. The... Now we're it's, lucky uh, he didn't. Funny. Maybe he. The victim was a man. It wasn't a her or a she, a her she. But um. Oh, there we that's go. That's terrible. That's terrible. Throw that one out. Throw that one out. Is right. he from Mars or is he from Venus? I heard uh, someone told me that uh, people that look like him are all from Mars. Uh, is that that's have you ever true. heard that? Yeah, maybe yeah, they're from true. the Mars energy. They which? I mean, it's a wild, it's a wild claim, but uh, this Mars bar. You can leave a Mars bar out and it's still good. And this guy too has the secret to, well, potentially the fountain of youth. We can look up some springs in this county, but uh, he's he's not looking that old. It's crazy. I think you're right. They just probably found someone wanted to wrap real? this one up. Yeah, yeah. He's actually from Haiti. He, he doesn't even him. know. This guy confessed to it. Probably smoked some meth, confessed to it. Didn't even realize he wasn't even born. Then. That's right. <laughs> but who knows? That's they crazy. went back in time. Would would Archaic say that this, this person went back in or they, they had to go back in time and make this person kill yep. the milkman so that they could then bring him back to the now and put him in jail? Yep. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um speaking of patience. <laughs> yeah. You know, this was a this was a real you who done it. <laughs> this was a you who done it. <laughs> who done it? It's a you who done it right here. Is a you who a chocolate? You who's a chocolate milk? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> type, yeah type I, I don't even milk. know my chocolate. Dang. You who done it? That one's I me. think he was a bit of a cad for killing him mm -hmm. like that in cold blood. It's probably yeah. too much of an old word. No one says cad. You know when they found you know when they found the milkman they uh they you know when they let when they moved the body there was nothing left but a chocolate outline <laughs> <laughs> a chocolate outline he left his mark that's right this milk has curdled yeah it's uh it was spilt milk literally and this is this where the term don't cry over spilt milk comes from because he was shot several times he would have dropped all the milk it would have been milk s smashed and splattered all over the street and people would have come out and probably wept at the side of this right it would have been a, a horrendous image yeah just uh, their beloved milkman and and just a splatter of white wastage yep now, hey, so, you know, there's could be two history. sides to this story. You know, the milkman might have been asking for it. Yep. Might have had it coming. But we uh, want to hear his side, and we can because he's still alive. Decorated World War II veteran milkman. Uh, Maybe he was a war criminal. Who knows? Fallen victim to the chocolate milkman. <laughs> <laughs> Enough with that. <laughs> Very good. Um, on, so guys. yeah, that's. <laughs> Any puns in the chat? The sense of humor. <laughs> we're just we're just calling out the the police department and the investigative part, uh, powers down here that have uh, they don't rest until they solve a murder. So it's uh, it's just very reassuring to know that they're on the they're on the case like that. So, but yeah, I guess the trial will start for that, and we will see his side of the story. Um, the eclipse happened as well the other day. And there was a woman who claimed that God told her uh, that while the eclipse was happening to go on a shooting spree. We can pull that up for the war. Yeah. Luckily, Straight. everyone's fine. No one got killed. Wait a sec. But of course, um, this is not something that God would advise. Something else was telling her this. Okay. But yeah, shout out to everyone being fine and not dying uh, in this shooting. I think it was on a highway or something. Uh, woman accused of solo eclipse shooting said God told her to do it. Interstate 10 in Northern Florida. Halon Nichelle Celestine. Very interesting last name there. Celestial. 
Talon, yeah. Talon, Nichelle Celestine was arrested for shooting after telling people that God told her to do it in the Florida Highway Patrol reports. She's 22 and she's actually from Georgia. So she came here from Georgia. In you know, she crossed state lines, presumably with a firearm, and unleashed hell on innocent uh, Floridians because uh, of voices that she would hear she was hearing in her head. Luckily everyone's fine. Someone was even shot in the neck. Um, and he's in hospital receiving treatment. But uh, Celestine uh, allegedly checked out of a local hotel and told the staff that she was going on a shooting spree directed by God. Oof. Uh, is that her? That's not her actual quote, but it's in quotation marks. In relation to the solar eclipse, I don't know what she actually said. Uh, she got What's a purple her, dodge challenge. Her last name is Celestine or Celestine? Like Celestine. Yeah, like Celestine. Yeah. Celestine, yeah. yeah. Celestine. Yeah. Like celestial. Yeah. Yeah, don't um, give don't give don't give your babies wacky new age names, guys. <laughs> it's a bad, bad recipe for disaster. Okay. Give them a it's normal an AR fifteen. <laughs> national name. Family name. Names are no joke, guys. You know, quirky yeah, names important. don't always work out. Yeah. Just my two so cents was, working at a at a you know metaphysical store. I meet a lot of skies and you know no offense to anyone rains and uh, mm -hmm. you know Gaia's and like yeah and they give those names to themselves right often they oh, rename yeah, that, well, that's, themselves that's even worse and that's, that's even, even worse. worse yeah yeah. But what's next? So this is the this is her? Yeah, and she was with an a, uh, AR-15, which was surprising. You shot a handgun as well, but I mean, we're we're seeing uh, we're seeing this sort of thing happen. Um, you know, AR-15 is a great weapon. Zoom in, yeah, sure. Can you, can you zoom in on that picture a little, please? Yep, this is the uh, bullet hole ridden car that she was. I think she was just driving on the highway, shooting people. So it's like. You know, when you so pull into a city, yeah. Those are bullet holes. You can't holes even feel safe on the highway. That's right. So um, who is who's the gentleman in the picture then? I guess some Ricky Williams taking pictures. Why why is why is a picture of Ricky, Ricky Williams on there? <laughs> what he is? Listen, guys. <laughs> Whatever. So, Damn, she's only 22. Not cool, Oof. very not cool. That's the worst part. Yeah, she's 22 from Georgia. Yeah, I mean, you know, get a little uh, get a little years under your belt before making a big decision like shooting other cars while on the highway. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm all for gun ownership and AR-15s are amazing, but you know, don't be doing this. This is like the kind of thing that then you go, this is like perfect ammunition to ban AR-15s. It's like why does why does this twenty two year old uh, Georgia woman called Taylor Celestine why does she just yeah. have an AR fifteen you know then what's her name again cheap. that's Can a I responsible gun owner kind of gun yeah her name is Taylor Taylor beautiful name Celestine beautiful traditional Talon. come on this is just like <laughs> teenager name they hate they hate him I'm I'm just gonna come out and say it. They hate American culture. They just degrade American names. Like, come on. Talon, Nichelle. Come on. <laughs> they're just jamming two names together. And they're just always trying to be unique and different. Go on. Yeah. Just slow down. Like, less is Talon, more. Talon, <laughs> Nichelle, Celestine. No wonder she went crazy. And then Celestine. Eclipse, you know, celestial mm. event. I yeah, it's like she's an MK, you know, mind control person that can go do this. Because why does she have an AR, and why is it she's celest she's celestial Celestine, and it's on the eclipse? It's like a perfect like psyop thing that actually happened, but 
you know, or how, you know, such a crazy coincidence. But uh, obviously it wasn't God telling her to do it. Maybe she just got paid a bunch to do it, you know, just helping this uh, gun uh, legislation to have legitimacy. But there's so many questions, so little answers. Uh, but we know this much for sure. She wasn't directed by God. That's for sure. Um, speaking of AR-15s, there's a woman missing from Florida because she was just straight up uh, carjacked with one of these. Did you see that? They're, they're searching for her now. So what's her name? Just a shout out to anyone who's seen her. Uh, Homestead, down in Homestead. Thoughts and prayers going out to, um, let's see her name here. Uh, I think there was some talk of them being related. Seminole County. Oh, I think they found a. Damn, this is terrible. Terrible Ugly news. news. <laughs> uh, there's lots going on. There's there's good things. There's bad things. There's things with the fish as well. Did you see the sawfish? Yeah, we've talked about that a little bit. Okay, yeah. So uh, the it's a mystery. They going... still don't know what's wrong. Sawfish are going crazy. It's unfortunate. Um, we're going to try and get like, an expert or something to, to come on. They're going crazy. They spin around. They're beaching themselves. People are like videotaping them like, wow, what a, you know, yeah. once in a lifetime occurrence. But they're really just going crazy. And no, that's going a horrible into, size. Going into places that they'd never be, that they'd never naturally be. Like as Do far. You think it's... Yeah. They're, they're popping up in weird places like Palm Beach County, which they're typically never found in. They you know, sometimes, but not anymore. But you're finding it chemical? In Palm Beach County. Is it Shh. chemical in the water? Is it frequency? Is it overfishing? Can, like, can you can you bring something up so people can see? Yeah, sure. please. It's like, and what is doing that to their uh, brains? The articles might tell us. But they don't know for sure. Some stuff like that happened uh, years ago or decades ago with a couple species of fish. They like spin mm. in circles. It's mm. happening in conjunction with this spinning fish uh, phenomena where certain fish are spinning like crazy, like going nowhere. And the sawfish have obviously like this big long snout on the front of their face. So some people think it might be like EMF. They might have more of like yeah. an antenna antenna effect. And they they almost have like a uh, metal detector type thing. That snout is oh, very magnetic, receptive. it's like electrical. Yeah. And this big long oh, snout that they have probably could be picking up the uh, you know, stray frequencies from something new. Could be chemtrails wow. fall, falling in straight into the water, you know, in the keys. It could be... Yeah, metals. It's hard to say. It could be the eclipse. The eclipse making them go nuts, you know? Right. Leading up to the eclipse. I know that crocodiles have been making a huge comeback too. Crocodiles being seen in places they aren't normally. Uh, much mm. farther north way more out in urban areas these past couple months. So who knows? Wow. Okay. And speaking of nature, there was a, a really horrible story that came in about a decades old banyan tree that was brutally hacked up in Fort Myers, which is oh, really terrible. very confusing how this happened. We've got to put a trigger warning of graphic in for this one but but you know who's going around doing this i just feel like this is this isn't a floridian you know uh native um sort of move this isn't florida people that have grown up here that would that would go and approve like a crew to do this because were, were they working for the like with construction they were building something it just seems like very illegal that they would try this It's in Fort Myers, so it's in the area uh, you've been lately. 
Michigan Avenue yeah. and Seaboard Street in uh, Fort Myers. Very sad. Yeah. I've been through there a lot. Uh, they have some of the nicest banyans in Southwest Florida near there, Fort Myers. Right. Miami probably has some of the widest, thickest. But Fort Myers in general, or elsewhere in Fort Myers, the Edison Ford mm. uh, property has supposedly the biggest um, or oldest banyan tree in the United States, you know, or at least Florida, the continental United States. So, wow. yeah, you know, sometimes they cut these up and piece them back together. They literally will cut them up. Really? Into they can quarter, come back? Quarter. Yes, they'll cut them into quarters and then literally like wow. Lego them back, back together. They'll cut them out of a city corner and put them somewhere else with more space. Yeah, okay. they, they piece... Yeah. They can piece banyan trees back together. That's saying that they would still survive that. Jeez. Yeah. So they ah, could have. Because they sort of. They literally. I, it, this one makes this one even worse because they could have chopped it up and put it back together. Yeah. And looking at the location, it looks like it's on, you know, a plot of land that someone probably has a plan for. So they uh, maybe they didn't want to go, maybe it is protected under the state or the county's laws and they didn't want to go through all of that. And so they just uh, maybe paid someone to make it look like a random accident or something unconnected to them. But it just speaks to, uh, I guess, the, the property prices down here and the lengths people would go to, but hopefully they can, they can keep it alive. Uh, another mysterious one, you found this one actually uh, a couple of weeks ago. An object that crashed through a Florida home. Is this is this what you sent me? That they're saying that it was from space, or yeah, that shit's crazy. The, a <laughs> yeah. piece of an asteroid came through this lady's roof, something like that. Yeah, uh, a, a mysterious cylinder. Crashed through the home yeah. of Alejandro Otero on March 8, one month ago. And uh, they say it's from the ISS. Uh, so, yeah, that, that makes, makes lots of sense. Uh, I was on Twitter here. And then I think spokespeople from uh, NASA, uh, they're looking into it. But, yeah, very... Um, Apparently, yeah, very, very strange things going on there with that. Um, so, yeah, lots of uh, lots of deaths happening. Uh, and uh, former NFL player Vontae Davis, very sudden, very mysterious uh, death that just happened. Quite young as well, right? I'm not too good with the sport especially NFL, but this was a shock to everyone. Did you hear about this? Vontae Davis. Yep, Vontae Davis. Who is Vontae Davis? Famous NFL five. player. Very, very young. Looks like he's mm -hmm. in the athletic prime of his life. Found out in a Florida mansion at 35. Uh, probably Miami. Broward. Broward, yes. So he played for the Dolphins, did he? Um, yeah. Colts, Dolphins, Bills. Damn. I hope he didn't take the V, but it's well, hard, to <laughs> hard to imagine what can kill someone that young and that healthy, you know, fit yeah. and active. But He's training all the time. To be fair, a lot of these so NFL very, guys, to be fair, a lot of these NFL guys, you know, don't do too great when they get out. But right. he was a big, huge star. He, he should have had, like, all the pieces in place for, like, a, you know, successful retirement. A lot of them, you know, most of them do just go on and have a happy life. But So he yeah. just retired and then this. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Very mysterious. Very mysterious. I mean, you know, they talk about corruption and cheating in the NFL. 
Um, I don't know what happens if you try and uh, whistle blow or you you say the wrong thing or make the wrong move. Maybe it's maybe it's like gang shit up in there. Uh, also, just speaking of uh, shocking things, a man accused of hiding cameras in a South Florida gym have, has Oof. been recording videos. Have you seen this? No. But you'd think it would be in the female uh, rooms, actually in the men's, the men's, oh, no. the men's bathroom stalls. Where's the look like? Uh Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's watching you take a dump and, and dap, Thirsty. dap, in, dap in Bernardo his Santiago Lopez, 30 years old, whole life dap, ahead of him. Fapping his little salsito in the stall next, <laughs> next door. I mean, Jesus. It's for the men. I mean, have you ever Mom, seen yo, a bro, like bro, this? Bro, quit staring at your phone and you know finish roll finish rolling my burrito, dude. Like, <laughs> uh, I just want to watch. Like, what is Yo, going bro, quit, on? Quit, quit checking your phone so much, dude. Can you can you keep chopping my chopping my lawn? <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> this the guy's landscape. It's not gonna mow land, 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 <laughs> Landscaper crime is intolerable right okay. landscaper he, crime that's it he There's wanted to break many... out of the of the of the landscaping business with an online business of his own and this is not the answer okay mr lopez has uh, really not the direction that we need to be going in i think he even uploaded them like he had a whole website uh and how is it that much of a profitable thing uh i guess Dude, he was I guess people want to see that. Like, it was profitable? Yeah. Did they, he uploaded did like they... over 400. Oh my God. Over 400 videos. Well, he, he recorded. I have to look more into it. This is Boynton Beach. This happened. Yeah, this is disgusting. Pom, pom, uh, how do you say that? Pompano? Pompano Man? Pompano. Pompano. Yeah. <laughs> Pompano Man. Or... Yeah, but you know, I mean, look. Think about going to the gym. Obviously, there's uh, mostly young uh, athletic guys to go there, but yeah, <laughs> it's not every one of them, is it? In the it's... stall, dude. That's a <laughs> disgusting pervert. Poop. Yeah, they're in the stall. Poop pervert. Like, you know, seeing the effects of too much uh, pre-workout and what it does to the to the lower intestines. I mean, uh. this is. This is rough stuff. Dude, you know, you know, what this reminds me of is, um, in Lake Worth, only a couple oh, of days yeah. ago, a peeping tom was. I don't know if he was even <laughs> caught. You, you can't even really say caught or exposed, but a peeping yeah. tom was captured on video, peeping and toming, oh. peeping and toming his tom. To, oh no! I don't know if it was a girl, but it, it the video made it seem like it was a girl in the girl's bathroom in a stall with a literal peep, peeping pervert looking underneath uh, the stall. In in, in a business. This was no, I think it was uh, like the, in a restaurant or a bar. I think it was the public restrooms next to Benny's oh, on the geez. beach. Okay, like well, that's already risky business, that decision. And it shouldn't be. We should be able to have faith in our public facilities. You know, in Germany, you won't be able to find public toilets because they don't they don't even allow any of this possibility to happen. They're like, you know, you should have made a plan. You should have gone at the hotel or you should have gone before you left or so so uh, practical about it. And hopefully we don't have to go in this direction, but it's, it's these peeping Toms that, uh, that are ruining it for all of us. Um, and I just saw that comment. Look, I understand. I have loads of great things to say about Florida, but I'm, I'm here reading the news and the last couple of weeks, there's been some unfortunate things in Florida, but I think the way that we can help them, uh, to stop is by being aware of them. Sometimes these stories don't really get out because it's just Florida news, you know? So that's why, that's why we're here to make sure everyone's aware of the, the Florida related uh, stories that happen like this. Uh, I don't watch the main news, so I don't know, maybe it did make the, the nationals, but uh, Santiago Lopez. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's over a hundred uh, people were recorded 130 and he made 400 uh, videos and 
they they went down to teenage age. So this is this is a very bad uh, ombre, bad uh, oh. senor. So so he was there was it was I just mean, the was public just it was just the public bathroom. So underage people came in, dude. Well, it's a gym. It's a private. So literally, gym. young young people yeah. were on there too. They that's what they say that he got charged yeah. with that too. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, execute what's this dude. Yeah, that would be great. Obviously, <laughs> swift um, execute, swift public execution. I mean, yeah, in lots of countries. Guilty. Yes, of course, lots of countries need- do that. Uh, I mean, how do you think that you're not going to get caught eventually? Like, you, how small are these cameras? Where are they? High? You know, like it's, it's a, it's a risky move. And Dude. I'd like to know how that traced them back to him, but probably through an IP address or something. Yeah, I'm Very wondering, did they did they find the camera or did they stumble on, did someone find the material online? Yeah, I'm not finding whether he was actually able to upload it in time, I guess, but that's a lot of recordings to be stacking up, right? <laughs> uh, but he's arrested, the, you know, the authorities have him. There's really not many stories. Look, there's only... Only the local, the local couple of papers, and uh, he's got a face that uh, is going to haunt us all. So I apologize for that. But I guess check your check your stalls. We just what we have to be aware of these things so we can uh, be street smart out there. I guess. What an entrepreneurial young landscaper. <laughs> yeah, like what's what are the websites? Maybe it should shine a spotlight on the. Uh, on the huge thriving demand that we have for this in the world. And, uh, it's just their culture guys. Images. We're being insens We're being insensitive and intolerant. It's right. Just their culture. Yeah. Yeah. Being racist. Um, mm-hmm. cool. All right. So is that now speaking of, um, let's just say, uh, abuse, abuse of privacy and stuff like that. The, um, woman who found, Ashley Biden, Joe Biden's daughter's diary, is from yep. Palm, oh, this is spicy. West Palm Beach. Yeah, oh, Amy yeah. Harris. So this woman is uh, herself a victim of uh, you know child sex abuse and stuff like this. And so she lives as a survivor to try and help uh, others that are going through it. And so I guess she just was very confident that um, the president's daughter had stuff in her diary that was of this nature. So she steals it and then goes public with the contents. I forget. I think, did she give it to Tucker or New York Post? Uh, I think it was, oh, Project Veritas, okay? So uh, James O'Keefe there broke the story. Um, he did, of course, do some, some, good, some good things there, but it's the lengths that he goes to to get the, to get the footage, you know? He, he'll really do anything. Just talking about James O'Keefe here, he'll do anything to get that footage. Um, but in some cases, the evidence was placed into his lap, like in this situation. Uh, uh, she, James O'Keefe. Guilty. Yeah, it's James. It's O'Keefe himself. James um, O'Keefe. He brought the story to the public. Uh, she found the di- She's saying she found the diary and other items at a friend's Delray Beach home, uh, and I guess read it and then wanted it to go public to try and bring attention to this and so for that uh crime she is she's going to jail for like a felony for reading someone else's reading someone else's diary yeah dude bitches be taking their diary too seriously (laughs) you gotta you gotta have a padlock ashley what are you doing you gotta have a little girly padlock that has a little girly key right I mean, that's, but she, she was obviously writing in it so much, getting so much off her chest that uh, there was no time for, for locks and keys. She just, um, she spilled a lot of uh, dark stuff in that diary. And what happens as a result, she goes to jail. This is probably not going to be a huge story because people don't want to draw more attention to it. Is it called a conspiracy theory in the like NPR would call it a conspiracy theory, a, a forgery, this diary, do you think? I mean, dude, you know that this is journalists routinely 
uh, come across stolen material. And as far as yeah. pu publishing stolen material, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's, the, well, it's, it's exposing the, crimes. It's the acquiring of stolen goods that people have an issue with, mm -hmm. you know, or you know how you got it. And she said she found it, but ultimately, was this diary worth, you know, five hundred, a mm. thousand, two thousand dollars? Why are you being charged with the felony for ultimately petty theft? You yeah, know, did and did, whistleblowing. Did the daughter, did the Biden's daughter, have a security clearance or something? Like, where's the felony come from? Mm. And I was like, we were saying exactly. before, if, if they wanted to deny it. If you wanted to conquer this, beat this, you say, oh, no, she made that up. We don't know who that is. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's a, you know, you can't yeah, prove you come that. Out in front of it. But just to hit her, to throw the book at her, is to prove that what she said was authentic. And what's in the diary yeah. was authentic. And it's all legit. By throwing the book at her, they prove, they show their hand, they prove that. You know, it exactly, was it's a it, it's a very poor move, and we can all see from the way that he is, you know, when he's meeting the public, especially children, um, that you know it, it obviously makes sense. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see what happens to this, but yeah, I mean, should that just be happening? Should she just be going to jail for doing that? Um, Hell no. It seems there's so much lawfare, and this is what Trump's um, this is what the whole Trump stuff is showing as well. There's a, you know, political factions that are using lawfare against each other right now. This is a, this is the election year. So we saw the, that, that shooting, that police uh, shooting of that teenager that happened um, in Texas, I think that, that I think they're trying to push that as another Floyd situation because this, uh, this year is going to have to heat up to try and, you know, distract away from the election or whatever. Um, I can wrap up now and there are a few more stories to go. There's a, there's a, there's a private pirate Island. That's, I try to look up where it is. It's called black Island. Have you heard about this? Hang on, hang on. You're going to get us in some trouble here. <laughs> uh, Jim made like 90% of the stories we did tonight were teenage uh, gentlemen, teenage well, families. This is a different kind. Uh, this is more the black drink. Kind of island, I think. This is nice. where the Mukio chiefs would have been sitting on the banks of and drinking their black drinks in the morning. It looks beautiful. I'll share a tab here. Uh, it's a private island of bungalow. Teenage so, island. So, it's teenager yep. island. So. <laughs> it looks <laughs> like a reality TV show. Um, but yeah, it looks like very picture perfect right here. Very isolated. So I guess it's got a high uh, price to keep it exclusive. Um, so they range from 1.5 million to 1.6 million. Okay, I would have expected more. It's in St. Joseph Bay, which is about a two hour drive from Tally, Tallahassee. And uh, it's named after the 18th century pirate, Black Sam Bellamy. So if you come across that, uh, that pirate in your research, Black Sam Bellamy, I don't know. And why was he known as Black Sam? I don't know. Black He's Sam. probably a Florida pirate if he... Let's have a look at him. It's a pretty good um, hip-hop name. All right. So here he is. An English sailor turned pirate. He would have hang, hung out of the Caribbean in this area of Florida, just near Tallahassee, the Prince of Pirates. So that's nice if you uh, if want to get isolated. Um, there's a lot of these uh, bunkers getting installed in places, a lot of these islands. So it's it's nice that folks have a place to go if things get a little crazy on the land. Uh, the, the date for the Red Heifer sacrifice has been postponed. It's also... Oh, yeah. um, a lot of news is coming out of the Middle East, of Jerusalem, the holy city, uh, because they've postponed it to the 22nd, April 22nd, okay, because we know this because they have asked permission to go inside the Al-Asqa Mosque to, 
do it not on the altar that we were showing, but inside the Alaska mosque. Um, let me. There's not there's not a lot of media stories, so I just see things on um, Twitter and such. Um, but they don't they don't get written into stories. But what what I have found stories on is that people have been trying to do sacrifices themselves, not officially. Ooh. Like they've um, just been trying to take a lamb into the temp the um the temple and do their own sacrifice. Let me try and pull it up. Nice. Really? Yeah. So they they can't wait for the main one. Quick, yeah. Can't hold it in. They yeah. Can't hold in their blood. Yeah. Damn. Uh, so. The sacrificers need a little need a little Montauk chia in their life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They they really can't wait so much so that you know they can't even wait for the official one. I've got a link here, just a sec. Um, so they're, they're just going right in. And, you know, we, we were thinking that it was going to happen on this altar, which was on the Mount of Olives, which they purchased for this uh, exact purpose. But actually, they're, they're going in. There's a theory floating around that um, they believe that God gave Adam and Eve, uh, killed an animal when they were naked and gave the skin to Adam and Eve. And that's where human sacrifice or animal sacrifice, I mean, comes from. Have you heard this? I mean, you know, you can inf you can infer that, but like this is this is the the party line, the media line. Mm -hmm. This is like, oh, we do animal sacrifices because uh, God did it too, and it's it's a it's a nice nostalgic thing. Um. So yeah, they're trying to go into the mosque to do the sacrifice because uh, it's Passover. It's coming up to Passover, I guess. Uh, so they're trying to take a, a goat in there. So very interesting there. So 22nd, put it on your calendar. Uh, that's what we are looking at for the new date. It's so hard to find these stories I just had earlier. Oh, good. Here, save them for the next one. We'll sign off yeah. here. My dinner's here. Uh, All right. The last off, thing guys. I want to say is, uh, oh nice. We've got it. There, there's Billy Porter is leading Pride this uh, this weekend, I believe, and uh, in Miami Beach they're having a, a big rainbow festival, and uh, he's 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 being like practically knighted uh, down there. They're celebrating him, and it just it's a great reminder to go watch Billy Porter. During the DNC dance that he did for the uh, for the election, they do it in uh, with the yeah. Check it out, the DNC Billy Porter song thing that he sings. It's one of the funniest things on the internet, I can assure you. Sweet, thanks, Jimmy Stingray. Guys, show Jimmy Stingray some love. Uh, he and just uh, had a he just had a birthday recently. Hey, yeah, all new clips. Knock it off. Get down. Yeah, my birthday was on the eclipse. Luckily, no rapture. Luckily, no portal to hell. Um, yeah. So I'll live to have other birthdays. It's going to be good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sweet. All righty. Well, thanks, thanks, everybody. Guys, here, let's pull this up real quick. Um. Can, we, can we close with this? Uh, the visuals of this video. Is that possible? Oh, guys, the Moringa Man. Oh, what's the visual? Oh, yeah. On, uh, oh, okay. The Moringa Man on Instagram. Well, what were you, what were you saying? Uh, the visuals of this Billy Porter guy doing this dance it was very popular around the election and people forgot. Sure. It's, as long uh, as it's, Oh, it's a YouTube video, though. Dang. Yeah, but yeah we shouldn't watch. We can't watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, go check it out, everyone. You've seen a little flash of it there. It's uh, it's really funny that it's real. It looks like a joke, like a like a sketch, like a spoof, but it's real. All right, guys. So, yep. Say happy. Have a good wish week. Jimmy, wish Jimmy Stingray a happy birthday. He just had an Eclipse birthday. Big event.
Big 30, mm -hmm. big 3-0, right? Yeah, on the that's eclipse. right. On the eclipse, it's big, no. yeah. It's a big yep, felt pretty good number. Piece. Big time, guys, here. Go buy this stuff, too. Get some Moringa. Support the channel. Support Jimmy and I. Um, Jump on the Patreon. We're getting a lot of uh, of the live streams on there now without ads. So you'll be able to jump on there, feel a part of things. And so check it out on the Patreon. Just type in Old World Florida. Patreon, you get the videos re-uploaded, uncensored. A lot of the old live streams are going to get pulled off YouTube yep. intentional, intentionally by us to help keep the page clean, trimmed, and also the less spicy material just waiting in the waiting in the background, the less stuff they can, you know, ban us over. Yeah, you talk about tall people, tall Native Americans. I mean, you can't be you can't be saying that they were any taller than anyone else. You'll be right. completely buried by the Smithsonian and uh, kicked off YouTube. So it's only a matter of time. Yeah, <laughs> judging of the reaction of that person at Jekyll Island. That's the tone. Oh, that's the number one NPC shutdown button. Is giants thinking about giants? Yeah, but. Guys, go buy us Moringa. Go check it out. It's amazing for you. Really good. Look it up. Don't just take it from me. Moringa, leaf. Buy some. You'll support us. Okay, you get the idea. Peace. Have a good night, everyone. See ya. Adios. See ya, man.